Tuan, I have a doubt. What is it, Jim? Have you heard of Saint Teresa? You mean Saint Teresa of Calcutta? Yes. Was she born in India? Hmm. I don't think so. I think she was born outside India, and she eventually settled down here. Do you know where she was born? Hmm. I can't remember, Jim. We lost Uncle Francis. He must be on his way here. That must be him. Uncle Francis. Ha <laughs> ha. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Uncle. Where is Joan? Good evening, Uncle. Good evening, Joan. Hey, listen. Have you finished all your homework today? Yes, Uncle. Why did you ask? That's good. I was thinking maybe we could go out for a walk today. The weather is so nice today. That's a great idea, Uncle. Let me go and tell Mom that we're going outside. Look at this one. <laughs> He is looking so happy. Hmm. <laughs> yes, Uncle. Jim was asking me if Saint Teresa was born in India or not. And what did you say? I knew that she was not born in India. Where was she actually born, Uncle? Hmm. I'll say that. But do you want to hear the full story of Saint Teresa of Calcutta? Yes, I do. Then why don't you call Jim as well? Jim, come here. Huh? Uncle is going to tell us the story of Mother Teresa. Story of Mother Teresa? I'm coming. Mother Teresa was born on August 26, 1910. She was born in a little town called Skopje, which is in the modern-day Macedonia. Her father, Nikola, was a successful businessman, and her mother was Drana, a housewife. We are going to call you Agnes. Agnes, what a wonderful name. As a little girl, Agnes was a very disciplined, thoughtful little girl who didn't seem to mind helping her brother and sister. She was apparently shy and introverted as well. What do we have for lunch, mom? We are having roast pork today. There you go. Just as you like it. And here is a special bread for you. Agnes. Yes, father. Haven't I told you before to not accept a mouthful unless it's shared with others? I'm sorry, father. You can have some of this bread, sister. It's really tasty. Thank you, Agnes. And here is one for you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, Agnes. You're always so kind. But the happiness didn't last for long. When Agnes was 9, her father got sick and he died. This left the entire burden of supporting the family on her mother. In spite of the difficulties, Drana ensured that her children attended the private elementary school and then the religious instruction at the Sacred Heart Church. Her mother's charitable nature, the daily prayers, the frequent visits to the church which was next door, and the summer pilgrimage to Let Nice All these must have nurtured the desire to serve God in the mind of little Agnes. Hello Agnes. Where have you been, father? I haven't seen you for so long. <laughs> I had been to Calcutta, dear. Huh? Where is this Calcutta? It's in India. It's a very beautiful place. Hmm. Look, father. I was able to raise some money from our people. Please take this. You can use it for your missionary work. Oh, that's so kind of you, Agnes. May God bless you. Father? Yes, Agnes. How can you know when the Lord is calling you into some vocation? Hmm, that's a very good question. I think you will know it by the happiness you feel. Ah. By the time Agnes turned 17, she sensed God's call upon her. She had just returned from a missionary work in Let Nice, and by the time she reached back home, she knew what she had to do. Mother? Yes, dear. I have to tell you something. 
What is it? When Agnes told her mother of her intentions to become a nun, Durana went immediately into her room and stayed there for 24 hours. She was pouring her heart out to God. And when she finally came out of the room, her emotions were under control. Mother, what were you doing inside all this time? I... I was quite worried. Don't worry, dear. I had to let out all my feelings. This profession that you have chosen is going to take you away from me. Oh, mother. Don't worry, dear. Now you must put your hand in his hand and walk all the way with him. I will, mother. Thank you so much. Agnes joined a Catholic order called the Sisters of Laredo and she was going to India like she had always wanted. She left Skopje on 25th December, 1928. Goodbye, my child. What they didn't know was that they were never going to meet again in this life. Agnes formally became a novice in the Sisters of Laredo and took the name Maria Teresa. She initially worked in a hospital in Bengal and then worked as a teacher in a girls' school in Calcutta. Yes, dear. I... I brought this for you. Well, thank you so much, dear. Teresa loved teaching from the start. She soon became the favorite of her students as well. Here, take this bread too. No, sister. You have eaten nothing. I know you're hungry. No, I'm not hungry at all. Do I look like I'm hungry? No, I don't want that. Hello there. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon. Now tell me, why are you refusing to eat the food? That's... that's because... Go on, tell me. We don't have enough food at home. Our mother could only get two slices of bread today. And my sister? She wants me to eat both of them. She... I know she's hungry. But she won't have them. Oh, is it true, dear? Hmm... Yes, teacher. My brother is sick. And the other day, when the doctor came to check on him, I heard him saying that he has to eat three times a day. That's why I was offering him my share of food as well. That is so kind of you, my child. Now come with me. Eat well, my dears. Thank you, miss. Sister Teresa? Yes, Mother Superior? Come here for a moment. Yes? Why did you offer your food to these kids? They are going to make this a habit, you know. I don't know, Mother. Sometimes I feel we have a lot more privileges than we are supposed to have. Look at these kids. They don't have food to eat. And what are we doing about it? You should stop worrying about unwanted things, Teresa. I know, but I just can't stop thinking about it. It was not long after that Teresa found her real calling. She was aboard a train traveling to Darjeeling when Teresa clearly heard the call that transformed her life. <music> Teresa's superiors were shocked when she told them of her intentions to leave the convent. However, they had much respect for Teresa and they got special permission allowing her to leave the convent. I don't think if that's the right thing to do, Teresa. We are worried about you. This is the God's will, Mother. I know what I have to do. Mm. Anyway, whatever happens, you know the doors of this institution will be always open for you. Thank you, Mother. Teresa got trained in healthcare and she started her work in the poor slums of Calcutta. She realized that the first thing to do was to take care of their health. 
she started giving free medical treatments wherever she found them. But the money quickly ran out, and she was soon left with a few coins. Sister, oh hello there. How are you today? Sister, can you please help me? What happened, dear? What do you want? I haven't eaten anything since yesterday. Can you give me a few coins to buy some food? Of course, dear. Now come with me. Good evening, sister. What do you want? Good evening, sir. Can you give this boy some rice and curry? To this boy? Do you have any money? I I don't worry. I will pay for his food. How much is it? But well, why do you want to help him? He is of no concern to you. He is a child of God, and that is definitely of my concern. Here you go. You have a great mind to help others, sister. May God bless you. Can you please make a donation, sister? Oh, hello. <laughs> Looks like that's all what I have. Do you have any money left for you? Oh, don't worry. Our father will take care of me. Which order do you belong to, sister? I cannot recognize by the sari that you are wearing. I am Sister Teresa, and I am a missionary. It's a pleasure to meet you, sister. I am Father Julian. You, you look like you're upset, sister. Is there some way that I can help you? Oh, it's just that I was thinking of ways for helping the poor. But don't worry, God will show me some way. Hmm. Looks like it's going to be a tough road ahead. I know. Don't worry, sister. I will pray for you every day, and I will come to see you whenever possible. Good luck, sister. Thank you so much. She had no sources of medicine when she started, so she would walk down into a pharmacy with a list of medicines she needed. She would wait for hours till their customers were attended. And then she would present the list to the manager with a great smile. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sister. What can I do for you? How about doing something beautiful for God today? Huh? It was her pleasant and cheerful character that made many of the pharmacists give her the medicine she needed for free. Sister Teresa had to struggle a lot to find the money she needed. With whatever resources she had, she helped the poor tirelessly day and night. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good, sister. Thank you for all what you did, sister. We don't know what we would have done if you weren't there to help us. I did what I had to do. It was nothing. Even the doctors were refusing to help us. They don't care about treating the poor. I would have lost my child if it weren't for you. Don't thank me. Thank God. Sister Teresa. Father Julian, how are you? It's so hard to find you, sister. One day you are in one place, and the next you are gone. <laughs> I have to attend to many people's needs, Father. I know. You have such a wonderful heart. And maybe that's why a friend of mine gave you this. What is this, Father? Go on, open it, and see for yourself. Ha! A check? But how? Who gave this, Father? <laughs> I spoke to one of my friend about your work, and he's really impressed with what you are doing. He gave this money to help you with your charity works. Thank you, Father Julian. You have no idea how many people are going to get benefited from this money. Thank you so much. In February 1949, a former student of Sister Teresa named Shubhashini, a Bengali girl from a prosperous family, joined her ministry. Good morning, Mother. Good morning. Hey, Shubhashini. It's you. It's been such a long time. I'm doing good, mother. How have you been? I'm doing all right by the grace of God. Tell me, 
Why are you here? Sister, I have always wanted to help the poor and needy. I know that's my calling in this life. Can you please allow me to join your ministry? That's wonderful, dear. But are your parents okay with that? Yes, mother. I have convinced them and they are fine now. Mm, then come with me, child. Like that, one by one, many joined the ministry of Teresa. By the end of the year, Sister Teresa's ministry had 10 members. All of them had the same motive, to serve the poorest of the poor in society. None of them received any payments for their services, and their sole personal wealth consisted of two saris, some personal belongings, and a prayer book. The disciples followed a disciplined way of life. They were up very early in the morning for prayer and mass. Then they had a simple breakfast of chapati and tea. They would be out in the slums by morning, servicing the needy. They returned for their meal, which again consisted of simple rice and dal curry. They would pray and rest for some time, and then again head back to work until evening. They prayed again before supper and more prayers after supper, and then they would go to sleep around 10 p.m. Sister Teresa, who was now called Mother Teresa by everyone, also charted a constitution for the new Society of the Missionaries of Charity. To fulfill our mission of compassion and love to the poorest of the poor, we go seeking out in towns and villages. We must search for the sick, the infirm, the lepers, the lost and the outcast. We must go and take care of them, offer them help, visit them often, awaken them to the love of greater God. The missionaries of charity expanded their work into more than 20 cities in India. By the 1960s, the world opened its doors to Mother Teresa. The Nobel Peace Prize was awarded to Mother Teresa in 1979. By then, the Missionaries of Charity had opened 61 new houses in 28 countries other than India. Look, she's not even wearing a shoes. Before beginning my speech today, I would like to invite all of you to pray. to say I love God, but I do not love my neighbor. It is very important to realize that love, if it is really love, must hurt. I have never heard anyone talk about love that way. Look at her. She doesn't even have to utter a single word. Her presence is more than enough. And one day, Mother Teresa was invited to meet Pope John Paul II. Mother Teresa was filled with joy as she always wanted to meet the Pope for a very long time. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, my child. Has the Pope arrived? Yes, Mother. He's waiting for you over there. Let me go to him then. We have so much to discuss and so much work to do. Mother Teresa, you have become a very important public figure. <laughs> yes, winning the Nobel Prize means that the people appreciate my work. But you know, I am doing this only to glorify our God. I understand, Mother. I am a big fan of yours too and I am happy that your fame is growing. <laughs> My fame can grow much more. It won't fit in such a small habit. Ha ha ha. I wish many people had your strength and your smile. This world would become a much better place. Thank you, Your Holiness. Mother Teresa breathed her last on 5th September 1997. She was granted a state funeral by the Indian government in gratitude for her services to the poor. And at the time of her death, 
Mother Teresa's missionaries of charity had over 4,000 sisters and an associated brotherhood of 300 members operating 610 missions in 123 countries. Wow! The missionary had grown so big! Yes, Joan. Uncle, what can you tell us about the miracles Mother Teresa had performed? Hmm. There were two miracles that were recognized by the Vatican that led the way to her sainthood. I will tell you about one of them. <laughs> In 1997, a tribal woman named Monica was diagnosed with a tumor in her stomach. There's nothing left to do now. I don't think we can find a cure for her. Oh no, please don't say like that. Please help her, doctor. Please do something. Please be calm. It's an abdominal tumor and there's no way that we can save her. Oh God, what should I do now? Please save my wife. Hey. Yes, sister? Listen, I know about your wife's illness. There's nothing that the hospitals and the doctors can do now. That's what they just told me. Tell me what to do, sister. I'll do anything to save her. There's God who's looking after all of us. Why don't you take her to the missionaries of charity and pray for her cure? Huh? After having visited a number of hospitals and countless doctors, Monica was then admitted to a home run by the missionaries of charity in the town of Patiram. Don't worry, my child. We are witnessing the first death anniversary of Mother Teresa with prayers in the chapel. Be strong and pray to God. I'm sure he will help you. Thank you, sister. On September 5th, 1998, while others were praying in the chapel, Monica too joined the prayers lying on her bed. Lord my God, please help me. That's when she saw a beam of light emanating from the photograph of Mother Teresa. Huh? Huh? <clears throat> In the evening, two sisters of the order tied a medallion with Mother Teresa's picture around the waist of Monica. And then they prayed over her. After many months of uncontrollable pain and suffering, Monica was finally able to sleep peacefully that night. And when she woke up in the morning, her tumor was gone. <laughs> what? But how? It's a miracle. <laughs> Thank you, God. Wow, that was a great miracle. Yes, Jim, there were other miracles that took place too, which include the recovery of Marcelio Haddad, a Brazilian. Mother Teresa was canonized a saint in 2016 after verifying the miracles by the Vatican. That was a great story, Uncle. Thanks for telling us. It was my pleasure. Come on, it's getting late. Let's go back home. Mm -hmm.